This show features adults using adult language. You have been warned. All right, bitches, let's get this shit rolling. Lick, right. lick, lick my balls. <laughs> <laughs> what? I. What? You're listening to episode 26 of the Hammercast podcast from the Hammer Gaming Community, recorded Wednesday, September 16th, 2015. Hammercast, smashing buttons, clicking mice, shuffling cards, and rolling dice. It's time for Hammercast, the show that brings you your weekly news and discussion from the world of games. I'm your host, Wayne Sibley, and across the country from me is my co-host, Mr. Joe Hollis. How you doing, Joe? Hello, I'm doing pretty good. A little tired, but yeah. Well, stop staying up till 3 a.m. playing Ark. I can't help it. It's it's like Minecraft, where you decide to do one thing and then it just roll. It just takes off from there. I've, I've been hearing that a lot from a lot of people lately. And rejoining the show after a month spent wandering the wilderness that is North, North America is Todd Chartier. Welcome back, Todd. Hey, good to be here. Welcome back, me. Go me. Yes, go you. Go you. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about what we've been playing. Joe, I, I sense a lot of, I sense a lot of arc. Yes, a lot of arc, but I've also been playing Pokemon Shuffle on my phone. Uh, usually just when I'm like in bed or sitting bored or something. When I'm not playing arc and I've actually got lives to play. Um, the game is fun. Like it, it's a, it's a cool little time wasting game, but it has some pretty big paywalls in it. Um, you start hitting some Pokemon that are just ridiculously difficult to fight. And the only easy way to beat them or the only, cause I've been able to eventually get past them, but after a couple sets of turns, like I'll run out of turns and have to come back to the game later. Um, but, like, this one that I'm on, it kept dropping metal rows so that I only had individual, like, ups and downs to do. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty annoying. And you can get around it by paying real money to, or playing, the like, you could eventually unlock the stuff, but it would take weeks. Right. Like, 9,500 gold in order to unlock the complexity minus one. Or you can pay two dollars to unlock it, three dollars to unlock it, or something. I don't, now let's I don't roll remember. this back a little bit, just for listeners and viewers who aren't familiar with Pokemon Shuffle. What kind of game is this? So it's Bejeweled meets Pokemon. You play a Bejeweled level. You have a set amount of turns. Uh, the expert modes have a time limit instead, and they're usually around like some levels have five turns that you can that you have to do it in and some have 20 that you have to do it in. It ranges between there. Okay. And the paywall mechanic is basically trying to limit you with the amount of times you can play or how often, how much gold you can accrue over a certain amount of time. Right. One, once a day you get 500 gold um, for every new Pokemon that you kill or you beat, you get a hundred gold. And That's right. You don't kill Pokemon. You never right. kill Pokemon. You knock them out. They're right. unconscious. And then you can tame them. And then you can level them up and ride them and capture more. Po oh, I'm, I'm thinking of Ark again. Sorry. It's, it's the world's most humane cockfighting. <laughs> it is. Pokemon is basically cockfighting for kids. I, I, I'm not sorry I said it. It's fun. I enjoy the game. But that's really what it boils down to. Todd, what have you oh, been playing? Like crossing the swords. Um, <clears throat> um, hmm, what have I been playing? So, you know, the last month has been uh, pretty whirlwindish for us. So we did play the whole how to pack your house into boxes thing. And then we played let's decide if we're going to move or not last minute. And then we played no, we're not going to move last minute. And then we're now playing unboxing the house out of all the boxes. So just so everyone who happens to know, we were planning on moving back to Massachusetts and then very last minute decided not to do that because we like Seattle and want to give it a little more of a chance. Um, but other than that, I have also been playing Ark uh, with Joe and the rest of the Hammers uh, on our private server, which has been a ton of fun, even though we almost blew it up yesterday. 
Um, and let's see what else I doing. I watched uh, Dwayne there play a whole bunch of Metal Gear Solid while I was out in Massachusetts for a couple weeks, and we played a bunch of Rocket League. So Rocket League is fun. I don't have a controller on my PC, but I'm gonna try to remedy that in the next couple weeks. Um, but I think mostly it's going to be ARC over the near future. And then I think the City Skylines update comes out soonish. Soonish. Let me see if I can track down a date on what that. Are they, what are they adding? Uh, they're adding a day-night cycle. Oh, um, right. A couple new buildings. You know, the, whole, the nightlife stuff and all that kind of crap. No, that's a paid expansion, right? Some of it is for free and some of it is behind uh, a purchase. Uh, I won't call it a paywall, but it's more like a purchase. You buy the expansion. But the the day-night cycle itself is going to be coming free to everyone who already owns the core game. Uh, it does not appear as though there is a release date for After Dark yet. Okay. I thought there was. And then, you know, coming up soon, we have uh, Battlefront coming, and we have Fallout 4 coming, and we have all sorts of stuff coming up. So I'm going to try to get a new video card in the next uh, month or so, but, you know, we'll see how funds work out. Oh, I stand corrected. The add-on will be launching for PC, Mac, and Linux on the 24th of September. So that's what I thought. That's in, like, what, a week and a half from now? And... Uh, It'll be coming out for fifteen dollars, fourteen ninety nine US. So that's not terrible at all. The game itself was pretty cheap. Hey, that's the day after we get our gig internet. <laughs> so you'll be able to download it like instantly. Yeah. Yeah. People are complaining that they're actually only getting like nine hundred and thirty megs. So hopefully, hopefully that won't happen to us, and we'll get our full gig internet. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah. if if you test it and it's anything less than a gig, you need to record the support call you make to CenturyLink. Because <laughs> we want to go ahead. On me. We, we, will, we, we want to publish that as like a B-side for HammerCast. You on your support call for your gig internet, you fucker. <laughs> yep, for, okay, here's the kicker though, $75. I think it's less than I'm paying Comcast for the... The totes 250 that I have now. All right, everybody. So remember, send your hateful tweets to DREGG0R <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, Bring them, bitches! <laughs> uh, let's see. What have I been playing of late? As Todd mentioned, I've been playing some Metal Gear Solid Five, which is fantastic so far. It's a little odd in that it's open world compared to the set pieces of previous entries in the series, but it, the, the stealth gameplay is as strong as it has ever been. I've also been playing uh, Super Mario Maker, which just arrived on Monday, and that's been a ton of fun. It's it's basically game design, the video game. You get to take this huge palette of tools and make your own Super Mario Brothers levels of any particular timeline. You can make it like the old 8-bit style Super Mario Brothers from the NES. You can make it look like the Super Nintendo, the, the more recent Wii games, etc. And you... People make all sorts of stuff. There's, you know, easy levels that that you just run forward and you get to the end. There's super, super hard levels that try to kill you at every turn. There are levels that play themselves, kind of like a um, uh, like a Rube Goldberg machine, which is absolutely nuts. But there's all sorts of great content to be found out there, and I am really enjoying Super Mario Maker. Actually, hold on, hold on. I, ha I have a thing. So did I read it right that Nintendo has been... Uh completely ruthless about uh, DMCA takedowns on YouTube about Mario Maker stuff. Has there been DMCA takedowns? I wasn't aware of this. I'm not surprised because Nintendo ha has been known for treating YouTube like a pariah and a lot of people have sworn off of uh, doing Let's Plays and live streams of their games as a result of it. But that's... I mean, don't both consoles directly support streaming out of the games now? I know uh, PlayStation does. Did, yeah, uh, PlayStation Xbox One did? and I think oh, wait, Xbox this is One the does. Wii. Yeah, so. the Wii does not. The Wii you have to have run into a capture card and do right. that whole nine yards. So because it has as much CPU power as your iPad <laughs> or something equivalent to that. But yeah, I got my awesome thirtieth anniversary Super Mario eight bit amiibo in the mail right before we started recording today. So happy birthday, Mario. I, I'm really digging this. I'm. It's actually probably the only amiibo I'm going to keep in the packaging because it just looks great and I don't want to, I don't want to open it. I don't want to ruin it. 
I don't want anything to happen to it. Somebody has an amiibo problem. I was there. I, I saw. Yeah, I do have an amiibo <laughs> problem. I took amiibos a, um, were showing up like every day or so while I was there. <laughs> Not every day, but like every every third day. <laughs> I can quit whenever I want. Damn it. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't really get into the Skylander thing quite as much as the Amiibos. Why are the Amiibos more than Skylanders? I, I think you know the answer to that question, Todd. To just the, the Nintendo yeah, the, stroking? Yeah, the, the, the Skylander stuff, while awesome, and the, the game itself was really cool, you know, Spyro, the, the character that all of the Skylander stuff was built around, Spyro came out in the mid to late 90s when I was already a teenager and I was already just kind of entrenched into different game IPs I was interested in. And Spyro was aimed at kids younger than me when he first hit the scene on PlayStation 1. So when they built the Skylanders franchise around Spyro, I just kind of was like, okay, well, this is a cool thing. My son likes it. You know, my son was gangbusters about it for almost a solid year. And then kind of it faded away. The Amiibo thing for me isn't even really about the video games. I mean, they enable cool stuff in the video games, but for me, it's just like, this is all Nintendo nostalgia. Nintendo is able to go ahead and milk the nostalgia right out of me in the form of my money. And well, whatevs. Yeah, yeah. I You saw what I did there and you're going to leave it alone, aren't you? Yep. Not, I, not doing it. That's what I thought. Not doing it. <laughs> and finally, I've been playing uh, Destiny, the Taken King, which is the third expansion, just dropped yesterday. And I've put maybe a grand total of about three hours into it so far. And I got to say, man, th this is the shit. Th this, this is the time to get into Destiny if you haven't before. The uh, There is more character development and plot and narration and cutscenes just... There's there's more meat on Destiny in the first 30 minutes of the Taken King content than there was in the entire game up to the Taken King. So De De Bungie has brought their A game this time around, and I strongly, strongly urge anyone who's even vaguely interested in giving Destiny a try to do so now. Yeah, I was contemplating hooking my PlayStation up to my PC. I haven't decided yet. You can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. It's not like anyone will play with me anyways, but... Uh, hi. Like I said, nobody nobody will play with me. <laughs> I've been playing completely alone forever because nobody really likes me on PlayStation. No one else plays PlayStation, especially on this call. So, you know, I would have to go out and find new PlayStation friends. And, you know, everyone who knows me, I mean, I'm kind of an asshole, so it's hard for me to find new friends. So, you know, fuck you guys. Just saying. Wow. So, I don't know what I'll do. You know, the funniest part is that, you know, a, a, a sizable portion of our community owns PS4, and now you just piss them off, too. Good job. Hey, none of them have ever asked me to play a PlayStation game. Just saying. Fuck you all. <laughs> Todd, you want to play Destiny tonight? No. <laughs> I don't play console then. games. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it all set up tonight. But uh, I know, like, I know where the PlayStation is. That's no problem. I don't know where the controllers are because they didn't make it back into the same box. Uh oh. Because I went and bought an extra controller and a charger, you know, the little chargey base thing. Yeah. So I don't those those three things went into a separate box and I who knows? Who knows where the frack that is. Let's let's do the news. Uh we'll do a little follow up. Uh, first, from last episode, we were talking about how there was a serious bug in Metal Gear Solid Five that uh basically killed your save files. If you took the female sniper buddy quiet with you on missions 29 or 42, uh, you risked having your game progress corrupted and would have to start from scratch. Uh, Konami last week came out with a workaround, basically don't bring quiet on those missions. And they have released a bug as of, yesterday or actually the day before that wow. uh you mean a fix they re yeah they released or, a bug yeah they released a fix not a bug they did not release a bug <laughs> why would they uh, admit releasing a bug you anyway. said it man we're just <laughs> just bringing you to the map something mm. yeah something uh anyway so quiet will no longer screw up your saves so if you go ahead and have a updated version of Metal Gear Solid on PC or PS4, Konami has a fix for you. The remaining platforms, they promise, 
will follow on soon. Uh, so that that's great. Uh, sadly, Todd, you didn't. I didn't get to the point with. I'm still not at the point where you get quiet in the game. So this hasn't affected me, but we'll 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 see how it how it goes. I don't uh, think you've been quiet a day. I've known you. Ha 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 ha. ha. Sony's Project Morpheus has a new name, and like all things Sony does in the gaming arena, they had to slap the PlayStation name on it. The Project Morpheus headset is now known as PlayStation VR. This is a little uninspired. It's on brand, but it just yeah. it, it doesn't get me as excited as the prototype name did. How do you guys feel? Typical Sony. I mean, that's what they do. I mean, I probably could have called that. Why couldn't they just called it Sony Morpheus or something? You, you'd that think would that. be too cool for them. Yeah. I mean, has anyone seen any reviews of this thing? How is it compared to the Oculus? Is it even out? I don't know. Have they had any trade demos yet? The only thing I've ever seen demoed was uh, the Oculus. Everything else I've seen, I've seen kind of somebody using it, like one of the developers showing it off, but. Uh, nothing that's been released as a developer kit or anything. Nothing that people can get their hands on to use. Got it. Well, they're apparently going to have it on the floor with demos at Tokyo Game Show this week. With oh. demos of 3D versions of Fantasy Final Fantasy XIV Online, uh, Summer Lesson, Kitchen. I have no idea what a game of named Kitchen is about, but this is the Tokyo Game Show. They I'm have thinking the games. Kitchen. You think? Could it be a cooking simulator? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, also, Dynasty Warriors 7, uh, Rigs, and Joy Sound VR. So the only thing in there I really know about is Final Fantasy XIV and Dynasty Warriors 7. Uh, but they will be demoing the thing this week at Tokyo Game Show. So it, it is something that we'll hear about from people who could afford to fly out to Tokyo and attend the game show and see what this was like. So it'll be coming out sometime in the first half of 2016. Sony has not yet committed to a release date more firm than that. Uh, also, last episode, uh, other Joe, Joe Maolo, and Heather and I talked about the rumors about Kingdom Hearts 3 and a mysterious Kingdom Hearts 2.9 that was rumored via someone's uh, LinkedIn profile. One of the graphic designers had a LinkedIn profile that, 2.9? Uh, yeah, that, that detailed that he worked on something for Kingdom Hearts 2.9. Well, at Tokyo Game Show this week, Square Enix announced that they will be releasing what is called Kingdom Hearts 2.8. I guess they like shaving tenths off of things. But it'll be Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue is the full name of the game. And uh -huh. it's going to include an HD remake of Dream Drop Distance, uh, cinematics from Kingdom Hearts back cover, and a new game called Kingdom, Heart Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep 0.2. So now we know Kingdom where the Hearts. other two tenths went. Yeah, I, I have no Kingdom idea Hearts. what this is all going to be about. Um, it's basic, uh, I assume it's going to try and link you from the story of Kingdom Hearts 2 to upcoming K Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't think Link is in this game. No, no, Link is not in this game. It's a crossover between Disney and Final Fantasy, and Link is nowhere to be found. So those of you who are Kingdom Hearts fans, there will be a Kingdom Hearts 2.8 that will lead you into Kingdom Hearts 3. And no, we still don't have a release date on Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, Minecraft Story Mode. This will be Telltale Games' uh, adaptation of Minecraft. They're one of their story games set in the Minecraft universe. These guys are the makers of the, uh, the Walking Dead games, The Wolf Among Us, the... Uh, really renowned um, Game of Thrones story-based game, and now they're bringing their considerable talents to Minecraft. Uh, we Tales spoke... of the border Borderlands. Oh, yeah, and Tales from the Borderlands. That's right. Uh, we talked about this last episode, and now we have a release date, the 13th of October, 2015. So just under a month away, you'll be able to get your mitts on Minecraft story mode, and there will be a physical release for all, four con all, the, con all the major consoles, Plus PC. You guys going to pick this up? No, but probably not. They had an awfully big presence at PAX, um, PAX Prime. Telltale did? Weeks ago. Yeah. 
they had a big booth right in the center of one of the expo halls, and I think they built it with blocks. I don't know. It took them forever to put that booth together, and it was big, and it was tall, <clears throat> and it was Minecrafty, and I, I couldn't figure out what the hell it was until um, they kind of unveiled the sign the morning of the show start. So because um, I was pretty sure that Mojang didn't have anything there. And then uh, we saw this big Minecraft booth, Minecraft booth going up, and I had no idea what was going on. So, you know, I took a quick look at it. I don't know. Minecraft story mode isn't my thing. It's not the reason I play the game. Um, but uh, yeah, interesting, interesting nonetheless. I mean, if anyone's going to do a good job at it, it'll probably be them. So we'll see what happens. And also, last episode we talked about the trailer for the BBC's docu drama regarding GTA 5, or I'm sorry, the making of the Grand Theft Auto 3 and the resulting franchise uh, with Harry Potter's Daniel Radcliffe featuring as uh, one of the developers at Rockstar and Bill Paxton starring as much maligned lawyer uh, Jack Thompson. That's the guy's name. He's been irrelevant for so long, I've completely forgotten his name. Uh, and some employees from Rockstar, people who are actually at the company during the events this docudrama purports to cover, has called it random, made-up bollocks, which I guess is what's going to happen whenever Hollywood gets involved. Uh, did you guys have a chance to see the trailer or read the Rockstar's reaction? That This is interesting. Uh, I did watch a little bit of the trailer. It uh, It looked interesting. I'm interested to see uh, Daniel Radcliffe break out of his Harry Potter stuff and something more interesting to me. So, uh, you know, I'll watch it and then we'll see. I'm not going to pass judgment until uh, I actually watch it. And I need to go back and read up on that whole thing just to refresh my memory. I mean, during that whole thing, I was more interested in the Jack Thompson Penny Arcade conflict than anything. But Right. Joe? Um, Probably not. I don't know. It doesn't seem like something I would watch. For as much as you play Grand Theft Auto? That's kind of interesting. I he'll saw... end up watching it because I'll watch it and he'll be sitting on the couch. Yeah, maybe. Stuck. <laughs> he'll be too lazy to get up. And then he's like, eh, fine. I mean, I saw a video on the new game modes that they're adding to free play in Grand Theft Auto soon. Or that they already did, I'm not sure. Where, you know, like one of them's a big bubble that's going to appear um, somewhere in the world. And everybody on the map needs to drive there and stay in there. And then once it activates, you have to stay in the bubble as it moves across the world. And you're trying to, like, jostle everybody out of the bubble and be the last one in it as it shrinks and moves across the... You, you sound like you're describing competitive super monkey ball. Yeah. In Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> it's a giant dome, not a little bubble. Hmm. Okay. And then uh, there's another one where you all get into helicopters and blow up. Like, whoever kills the most Merryweather uh, helicopters wins. And I can't remember what the last game mode was, but it looked well, interesting. We'll dig up a link about the new GTA 5 game modes, and we'll stick those in our show notes, which will be at hammergaming.com slash hammercast slash 26 for episode 26. I think that kind of wraps up the follow-up for now, so let's get into the new news. The new news. New news. New news. New. So... Pokemon Go is going to be bringing the world of Pokemon to Android and iOS next year. Uh, this is a new game being a collaboration between Nintendo, their Pokemon company subsidiary, and Niantic, the developer responsible for popular Google-based augmented reality game Ingress. Uh, you're going to be able to put the app on your mobile device, your phone, most likely, and go out into the world and find Pokemon hiding in the real world, fight them, capture them, do trades and battles with other trainers, and there will be random emergent events in the world that the players can respond to and create you know, social interactions organically. Uh, there's a really great little trailer for the game announcement. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes. 
And there's also going to be a little uh, wearable that goes with this. It'll be completely optional, not required for gameplay. But there is a Bluetooth-powered device called Pokemon Go Plus, which you wear much like a smartwatch or you pin it to your clothing. And it looks like a little Google Maps marker pin, but styled like a Pokeball. And it has a built-in LED and vibrator that will notify you when something is important is happening in-game, like if you're walking past a place where a Pokemon might be hiding. Uh, So this is interesting. We talked quite a few episodes ago about Nintendo approaching the mobile space, and it's important to note that this was not done as part of of Nintendo's partnership with DNA. This is a completely separate initiative that was started by late Nintendo president Satoru Iwata. Um, Did you guys have a chance to get a look at this, and what do you think, Joe? Uh, I did see a few pictures of it. I read the article on it. It Sounds interesting. You mentioned that it sounds like in- Ingress, right? Yeah, it's made. It's they worked with the people who made Ingress okay. to make this. Google, Niantic. <laughs> Isn't there a huge Google Niantic partnership thing? I'm not or am entirely. I thinking of something different. I'm not entirely sure. I know Niantic worked with Google to make Ingress, but I don't know that Niantic is a subsidiary. Hmm. Uh, it kind of sounds like everybody in the same area is going to have the same Pokemon, and you'll have to travel further to get more rare Pokemon. Um, I don't know how... Like, did they ever say how packed they're going to be, or is there going to be one Pokemon fixed to the park down the street and another Pokemon fixed to the school uh, three blocks away? If it works anything like Ingress from my very brief time playing the game, it's going to be a lot more emergent than what you're describing. Uh, There are certain permanent things in Ingress that are always there, but there's also new stuff popping up all around you all the time. So if, if they keep that level of variety and emergent gameplay, then I'm not particularly concerned. That is going to right. get stale if you don't move around. If you're like if you're like me and you're bound to the same neighborhood for like ninety percent of your existence, then you'll still have a reason to get out of your house, walk around, go to the park, go down the block, and capture new Pokemon. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they implement that because in Niantic or in uh, Ingress, by the way, Niantic is a startup within Google. Um, so in Ingress, portals are usually at uh, points of interest, and people can submit points of interest and if enough people do or something like that then they'll add a portal there but there generally isn't just new things that just kind of pop up out of nowhere um portals are fairly fixed even in uh ingress um now there are events that are a little that work a little differently that kind of come up you know they're different every month and that kind of thing uh i'm actually kind of mid-level in ingress so i've spent you know quite a quite a lot of time playing the game so um and it's interesting especially if you're living in a city and you're out doing things um like walking around downtown or doing some of the tourist stuff or whatever you know there's tons and tons and tons of portals down there you know at one point phil and i like owned a whole neighborhood here um down because we would go down for coffee every other night or something and would just blow up all the portals down there and um you know take them over that kind of thing so. so you're so what you're saying is you're a slumlord. Um, yes, I guess. <laughs> sure, I'd love to be a slumlord in Seattle. I'd be like I'd be a zillionaire. <laughs> Starcraft Two: Legacy of the Void, the final chapter of the Starcraft Two saga, will be launching this November. 10th. So mark your calendars. We finally have a release date. Uh, I know Todd and I and my wife, Jennifer, we all got into the closed beta this week. Joe, did you get an email? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, I'm not even sure I'll have time to, to play, but I almost started the, to download the beta client. And then I realized, wait a minute, we have to record a show. I need my bandwidth. Um, But I'll be installing it tonight, and I'll let you guys know how it goes. Uh, This is an interesting little bit of historical trivia. 
So this past week, we celebrated the 30th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers release in Japan on September 13th, 1985. And there will be no matching celebration for the 30th anniversary of its release here in North America because, frankly, nobody's quite sure. That Uh, is amazing that such a significant date was missed by the geek historians. Yeah, it's significant because of everything that's happened since then. But when it happened, it was just some, you know, Japanese game company releasing a video game here in the States. It just, it wasn't as big of a thing as a Mario release is now because it did not have that cultural cachet. Um, so yeah, there's a piece on The Verge where they detail all of the confusion around the actual North American release date of Super Mario Brothers. Um, so just to be slightly on topic, when was the first time either of you played Super Mario Brothers? What year was it? I don't know, it's like a hundred years now. I can barely remember. <laughs> just I remember ba- playing it. Ballpark it. I'm I'm actually kinda curious. Eighty eight? I don't know. It okay. would have been very early after it hit the States. So we bought a first gen Nintendo um within months of release. So And that was so, that was the launch title, so Right. Yeah, so you're you're probably looking at late eighty five, early eighty six, depending on whether you It was got probably it that Christmas season. of eighty five. Okay. Awesome. Uh I think I first played it for Christmas of eighty five when my cousins got an NES. And we had Christmas over at their house, so they let me play, and I was a whopping five years old and didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, And the subsequent holiday season, I got my own NES and was playing it at home all the damn time. So, happy anniversary, Mario. I wish we knew when your birthday was. Um, Harmonix has given a detailed breakdown of Rock Band 4's career mode. Uh, You're going to have a lot more choices than you've had in previous Rock Band games, and they're going to matter a hell of a lot more. So, for example, you'll be able to decide what kind of band you are. Do you want to have a manager? Well, your manager may lead to you having boatloads of cash, but you have to play a very strict schedule of shows. Or you could take to the open road and play where you want to play, but you might not have the promotion you need to guarantee big crowds and a big payout. You might not be able to book the places you want to play. It's a, it's a, it's a lot more freeform and interesting as opposed to just standing in front of your television, holding plastic instruments and playing Weezer for the 15th time today. Uh, And speaking of playing Weezer for the 15th time today, Harmonix has released the full track list for Rock Band 4, including things, including artists such as uh, Brad Paisley, Brandy Carlisle, The Gin Blossoms, Imagine Dragons, Leonard Skinner, Mumford & Sons, R.E.M., The Warning, and others. We'll go ahead and post a link to the whole list in the show notes. Um, Are we interested in picking up our plastic instruments again, gentlemen? I, sure. Yeah. Fuck you, Joe. <laughs> For those who don't know, Joe is a savant at these uh at these musical rhythm games. So he will gladly pick up an electric guitar anytime, anywhere. Todd and I, on you the know, other hand. I don't have the coordination. Plus, like, I don't know, something about the screen and the shit scrolling at me. Like if I look at it for too long, um, and then I look away, the whole world feels like it's doing that same coming at me thing. And it gives me the, makes my head spin. And I don't it like is, it. Todd. It is. It, the whole maybe. world is coming at you. Yeah, Phil can't even watch the game because it makes him sick. You should do what, um, what's his face from South Park does. They're coming right for us and then shoot, shoot it. Shoot them. Shoot yeah. the screen, yeah. Um, You know, just... Out of curiosity, I would be really interested in seeing what would happen if you tried to play a rock band game with an eye patch over your 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 bad eye. See Arr. if that would get any better for you. I mean, what you lose in depth perception, you make up for with piratey sex appeal. It's true. The other thing is, um, you know, Abner, uh, another hammer, was playing the game 
what, Rock Smith? Was that the one where you actually learn how to play the guitar? Yeah, you you plug an actual guitar into your computer and you get all that. Yeah, that's that's looked really interesting. I haven't been able to I haven't been able to convince myself to bite on it yet, but I've looked at it several times. Yeah, I, it'd be interesting to ask him what he uh, what he thinks about that. I don't think he's touched it in a little while now, but I know he was doing it pretty steadily for a bit. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll have to track him down and see if I can see what he thinks of it. Or he can respond directly to us on Twitter at Hammer Gaming, and he can let us know directly how what he thinks when he hears this. Uh, speaking of which, this is a great time to remind everyone that HammerCast is brought to you by the Hammer Gaming community, where an adults-only group of gamers from across North America and Europe that play all sorts of games together. The Hammer's been around since 2007. We originated as an MMO guild in World of Warcraft, like so many gaming communities, and expanded into a full offline community with our own forum, Minecraft, and ARC servers, and the podcast you're listening to or watching right now. You can check us out at hammergaming.com. There's a clip up on Vimeo where uh, one, of the, one of Disney's classic animators, this is the guy behind uh, Beauty and the Beast and The Little Mermaid, his name is Glenn Keane. His father was the creator of Family Circus, Bill Keane. And so this guy's got some serious animation and drawing chops. Well, uh, HTC gave him a piece of software called Tilt Brush, which is a three-dimensional drawing program for their yet-to-be-released Vive virtual reality headset. And you get to watch Glenn Keane go to town with his iconic characters in virtual reality in 3D. And it is a breathtaking and touching video. Uh, We'll go ahead and link it in the show notes. You guys ought to check it out. What would you guys think of this? I thought it was pretty pretty cool. You know, it's one of those things where if you're creative, you know, the medium doesn't necessarily matter. And this guy proved, man, when you're a real artist and you got a lot of experience, uh, he did a did an amazing job. I was impressed, and I'm jealous. But that he can do that. <laughs> that yeah, I have no artistic ability whatsoever. So it was it was amazing how he made it look almost three D. It was just a sketch. But you could swear if you were standing right there, you could see it in three dimensions almost. Like if you were to walk around it, it wouldn't look 3D. Yeah, but it would break down. from his perspective, uh, everything looked like it was supposed to. And like the Little Mermaid, uh, like her fin was coming out toward him. And her body was back a little bit further. And her hair looked like it was a little bit back. It was and so floating. Good. Which was and the amazing floating. part. It wasn't dropping right. with gravity like it would in air. It was floating because she was underwater and she had bubbles all around her. And yeah, yeah. it was great. You you guys definitely need to take If you do one thing as a result of this show today, you need to go and follow us on Twitter and then go watch this watch Did this he ever video. finish any of the drawings or was it all just sketches and stuff? Cause I it was didn't all get sketches. He, he oh, okay. didn't go back and actually, you know, touch them up like he would for an animation cell, but. He he did some really great sketches of Beast from Beauty and the Beast and Ariel from The Little Mermaid. So Epic, the folks behind Unreal, have decided they're giving away Infinity Blade 3 for free. And along with that, and probably even more importantly for those out there who are trying to make games with their Unreal development kit, they gave away almost 8,000 3D assets that Epic developed for an unreleased spin-off of the Infinity Blade series. So it's about uh, $3 million in art and asset design and sound design that they've just released to the community for free to play around with, which is kind of awesome. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, did you guys take a look at some of these photos? Cause th- this is, these are really high quality assets in here. Yeah. I, yeah. I like the guy in the uh, box suit. Yeah, the cardboard, <laughs> yeah, the cardboard hero. box. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> awesome. I'm trying to wonder. Yeah, I don't think he was at PAX. What, the cardboard hero? Yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> there was a, I actually did not see as many um, high-quality cosplayers as here as I have in the past. Is cosplay usually a thing at Prime? Because I know it's big at East. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's pretty big. I mean, I don't know, Joe, were you... I was doing my whole management thing, so I was running around a lot. Did you notice any uh, <clears throat> coming through PC Freeplay? 
I noticed a couple. They weren't like in full dress. There were some people who had like face paint and their clothes resembled a character, but nobody in like a full get up came into the PC free play area that I can remember. It would be hmm. kind of hard to squeeze in and sit down at one of those chairs with a full get up though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I wonder if they stay away from those types of things because of the costumes. I never really thought about that. So, uh, you guys like Minecraft. Everybody yeah, likes okay. Minecraft. Minecraft's kind of huge. It made Notch fucking rich. And everybody has been trying to cash in on the survival slash builder game craze for years now. We've got things like Ark and direct ripoffs of Minecraft, which will remain unnamed. And now Square Enix has decided to jump on the bandwagon late, like Square Enix is want to do dragon quest builders which is the uh dragon quest take on minecraft has been set up for a january 28th launch in japan uh there's a trailer for the game which looks kind of interesting it's it's very it, it definitely tastes a lot more like dragon quest than it does minecraft but it's uh it's it's a thing did you guys take a look at this the video won't play for me no, I had a problem too, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's odd. I'm playing it right now. Hold on, let me look. Yeah. It's... Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it actually. Oh, I've seen this. This popped up in my Reddit feed. So it looks uh, like yes. you could build a village and then go out and adventure and get more stuff and come back to the village and improve it. And it, you know, it seems very that... Minecrafty. The thing that, you know, Minecraft, uh, you know, Minecraft had the building and creating down really well, I think. And it had, you know, the huge trees of stuff to build and all that kind of crap. The tech so what trees it didn't, and stuff? Yeah. So what it really didn't feel like it had to me was enough risk in the game to make all that stuff worth it. It's like, you know, you could very easily mitigate dying in the game if you just dug a little cave into the side of a mountain and nothing would ever get you. And there really wasn't even a lot of mods to help do that. So it felt like, you know, you'd spend all this time building these big castles or whatever, but, and, you know, they had all these defense weapons that you never actually needed because nothing could threaten you. So, and in this video, if I recall correctly, there was actually a thing where it showed a big golem knocking down a wall into the village. So, right. you know, if they actually accomplished some of that, and it sounds like, you know, maybe the city builder y kind of stuff in, um, Fallout might have some of that too. So I think that that will add another aspect to that whole style of, you know, collect, create uh, gameplay. That'll be fun to me anyways. Joe? I can't give much of an opinion on it because I can't get the player to play and there's not a whole lot about it in the article. All yeah, right, the, the article was very, very short. Yeah. It was more of a regurgitated press release yeah. than anything else. And the video was kind of short, too. It was just some bad music with some gameplay over it. Yeah, it, it's more of an announcement trailer than an actual gameplay trailer. Here's my opinion. Obviously, the Minecraft inspiration <laughs> is heavy, to say the least. But it could be good. I'm often thinking that Minecraft could use more direction in single-player story, in addition to its original modes. Are you reading uh, the article? <laughs> no, Are you I'm reading, reading the article? That... I'm reading a comment to the article. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Bad Joe. Bad Joe. Sorry. Naughty Dog. That's funny, though. The developers behind uh, the Uncharted series and uh, uh, Jack and Daxter and The Last of Us may have let slip that they're working on another game in the Last of Us universe. Uh, during a live stream where they were talking about the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection, where it's going to be the first three games remade in HD, um, does lead animator Eric, B or I'm sorry, writer Josh Scher kind of let slip he said, all the facial animation in the Uncharted series was let up by Eric here. And on the first Last of Us, uh, did I say the first Last of Us? And after this little slip up, he was very flustered, oh. repeating himself a few times and tripping over his words. It definitely looked like he 
said something he wasn't supposed to say. So Ouch. perhaps Last of Us 2 confirmed? Well, okay, my opinion on it is it could have been an accident because it has Last of Us. So he could have meant to say First of Us, but changed his words <laughs> and said First Last of Us. <laughs> that's that's where that could be. So if that ends up being, I called it. <laughs> but uh, the fact that he was flustered afterwards and uh, seemed like he did something wrong makes me think that maybe he did let it slip. Yeah, in before lock. Yep. Oops. I just wanted to put that out there. That That is a possibility, like a, a slip, because you meant to say last of us, but you said first last of us. The first of us. First what the hell's that? What the hell yeah. game would that even be? <clears throat> what was the la- I never played The Last of Us. What was the gameplay style? Uh, it was kind of like the, the the this is really problematic because The Last of Us is kind of stands on its own as far as a work. Um, but it's it's like an over the shoulder third person shooter taking place after a zombie apocalypse has destroyed civilization and. You are, and it it starts off with the actual outbreak and you and your family trying to get away from it, and you end up trying to survive and you're given a thing to do, a very important thing to do, which I will not go into because it will spoil things, but it, it, The Last of Us is a game worth playing and you should play it. Or if at the very least, if you're not going to play it, go to YouTube there is a really great set of Let's Play videos where the person who was recording it cut it so that it plays like a drama TV show. Hmm. And that's kind of cool. That is excellent. I, that's I don't how know I feel about been... most games, like watching you play um, Metal, Metal Gear, Gear Solid. I mean, that's what it was to me. I was just <laughs> watching an inter- interactive TV show. <laughs> a TV show with menu screens. Yeah, basically. that I get to have some input. Like, get guy over there. So The Last of Us is kind of like a uh, a better version of The Happening, where the trees are trying to kill you, except it's like a fungus. Oh, the movie. Yeah, The Happening was that terrible movie where yes. nothing happened. Right, the, the not happening. <laughs> well, So I, M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, there, there was an honest trailer of it, and they said, The Happening, where it's... It's happening, and it's happening, and then nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a pipe that they talk through, so where is that? At the that end? Was in, it was in that movie. At the end of it, right? Um, no, it was kind of like in the middle where one of them was out in the garden shed, and one of them was in the house. The other group of them was in the house, and they were talking through this water pipe. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it was the end of the movie. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. So yeah, I actually, by my brain, made up more content just to make the movie seem more interesting, <laughs> I guess. And then they all came back, and they all died, and the entire planet died so, miserably. So you're, you're you're basically having a hallucinogenic movie experience right now. Kind of. The whole world was tripping balls. It's the happening. I, I think you're the only one tripping balls right now, Todd. I wish. <laughs> Well, that'll be it for this week. Thank you guys and thanks everyone out there for tuning in. Hammergaming.com slash hammercast slash 26 is where you can find show notes for this episode. We are Hammer Gaming, all one word on Twitter. Follow us and you can get updates on when new episodes of the show are available as well as other news and gaming news from the Hammer Gaming community. Todd, where can people find you online? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at Dregger, D-R-E-G-G-0-R, and on our new Discord server that we've been uh, using a lot lately. If anyone wants to join us on there, just hit one of us up for some information. And Joe, where can folks find you? At D-A-Z-I-K-L-P on Twitter. I'm also on Discord uh, as just D-A-Z-I-K. Okay. And I am Val Thonis. That's V-A-L-T-H-O-N-I-S on Twitter. Once again, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thumbs up. Fuck on. Oh.